Water levels have exceeded the 1974 benchmark and emergency crews are on standby in Shepparton and Echuca. Andrea Thompson begins our coverage. More than 160 millimetres of torrential rain was dumped on the northeast yesterday. Shepparton suffered widespread traffic disruptions as motorists ploughed through swamped roads. As a deluge continued throughout the night, 2,000 residents in Benalla, Bright and Moyu abandoned their homes, assisted by dozens of emergency crews, police helicopters and volunteers. Swollen from waters upstream, the Broken River burst its banks, inundating the Hume Freeway, isolating surrounding properties and stranding stock. At 2 o'clock this morning, evacuations reached crisis point as the army was called in to ferry stranded residents to nearby schools. Some evacuees say the floods are the worst in living memory. Well, the house is flooded. It's about knee deep when I last saw it. I'm wet through. Just very frightening. A lot of water and very frightening. We didn't know what to do, so we just grabbed a change of clothes and just ran out to the truck out the front and left. Um, well, we woke up and we had about a foot to a foot and a half of water in the uh, house. And everything was floating around, so we just um, grabbed the young bloke and got out. Bridge Street Benalla resembled a river by daylight, with dozens of shops and businesses more than a metre and a half submerged. Meanwhile, donated food and blankets for devastated families continue to flow into the emergency centres in response to the growing crisis. Those that, that can't return to their homes will have to find uh, alternative accommodation for them. Either we'll use people they know, relatives, or they may move out of the area on their own volition, or perhaps we may have to put up in motels. Or... Actually, people are coping very, very well. We, uh, I believe the morale is fairly high here. Um, usually in situations like this where uh, you know, as if, if you class it as a disaster, which I suppose you would, um, people pull together and uh, the situation, you know, the people are pulling up very well for it. The Hume Freeway south of Wangaratta and the Midland Highway between Shepparton and Benalla are now closed. Residents along the Goulburn and downstream to Echuca are bracing themselves for further floods, with a river expected to peak tomorrow, possibly higher than 11.8 metres, following record releases from Lake Eildon. What it means is that there uh, may be some low-lying areas along the river that will be affected, maybe a caravan park and some areas out of Kyala and around the boulevard. Floods are not expected to subside for several days. Andrea Thompson, Vic News. And the state government is offering flood victims throughout the Goulburn North East emergency assistance. Celia Horgan reports emotional and practical aid is also being provided by several welfare and service organisations. The state government acted quickly to offer financial support to those worst affected by the floods, this morning announcing immediate emergency grants and longer term relief packages. For the emergency uh, uh, grant, it's up to $700. And that's based upon what the needs of, of the individual are. There is no uh, assets tests associated with that um, or, or income tests. Uh, there is, however, for the temporary living uh, allowances. The Department of Health and Community Services is also assisting those left homeless by the floods with temporary accommodation, clothing and counselling. Meanwhile, after battling last year's wet spring and early summer, Goulburn Valley orchardists face yet more serious problems as a result of this latest deluge. It sets up ideal... The damage bill is expected to be in the tens of millions. Helen Ballard begins our coverage. From the air, Benalla is a patchwork quilt of muddy water. Cars almost completely submerged, the centre of town a river. Trapped in their homes, residents waited for evacuation teams most of them have water up to their kitchen sinks. Pets, those who survived, carried to safety. This is probably the worst emergency situation that Victoria has faced since Ash Wednesday. It's been the heaviest rainfall recorded, 140 millimetres in 24 hours. So bad, the army have been called in. This was the main street. It's now a raging torrent and rising by the minute. The floods have effectively cut the town in two and most people are still in shock. It's just the shock of it all and people just didn't have any warning that the river was going to do this. Even the SES was underwater, workers battling to keep communication open to the town they were supposed to be rescuing. Workers did manage to ferry those evacuated to the local high school. A few were taken to hospital with minor injuries caused trying to escape their houses. Some, like 87-year-old Frank Sherry, refused to go, fearing his home would be looted. Oh, well, you never know today. And I said to myself, even, you know, when there's nobody about and that sort of thing, that's when they're popping about. So I just thought I'd soon stay here. Frank Hammer had just renovated his house to sell. Had a few people look at it, but 
I think it'll be a while before anybody looks at it again. The Emergency Services Minister, who's also the local MP, says the government will provide up to $3 million in assistance. Enabling people to get back in their homes to ensure that basic uh, essentials can be purchased, such as food, clothing, etc. But warnings that in flooded areas, drinking water is not safe. The Health Department says it should be boiled first. And the SES has a warning to would-be travellers. Motorists should avoid the area at all costs because roads may close at very short notice and people may easily be trapped. Tonight the Hume Highway is cut in several places as are other major highways and roads in the region. Helen Ballard, National 9 News. Tonight the main battle will be to save Wangaratta further north where newly built levee banks have already been broken by rapidly rising floodwaters. Gavin McDougall is there. Brian, that first breach happened on the King River, a little upstream from here. A few houses were flooded from that, but the real worry is downstream here on the ovens. You can see the levee bank uh, just behind me here. That hasn't broken yet, but that is the worry. There's been no decision yet as to whether evacuate people, official decision. Some people aren't waiting for the authorities. They're starting to move out of their houses already. Their uh, furniture vans, tray trucks, utes, anything they can get to move the belongings out of their house. They're not waiting for the water to come through. Some of the people are already talking about the worst floods they saw here some 20 years ago. They're saying, oh no, here it comes again. The roads have been cut when those people move out, out of their house. They can only move to higher ground within Wangaratta. Most of the roads around the town have been cut. There's virtually no way out. The city has almost been isolated. What they're trying to do now is uh, make sure that the other levee banks don't break. There are people sandbagging. There are soldiers being brought in. They're sandbagging as well. The fight really is on tonight to try and stop the floodwaters breaching into Wangaratta. Brian, back to you in the studio. Gavin, it certainly is a mess, and thank you. Emergency telephone numbers have been provided for flood victims and their families. Anyone in need of urgent assistance should call either of these two numbers. For people inquiring about relatives in the flood area, the Red Cross helpline is Melbourne 686 8333. Moscow is in turmoil tonight as troops loyal to Russian President Boris Yeltsin surround the rebel-held parliament building. The death toll is rising with at least 25 people killed. The man survives a raging torrent by clinging to a tree for five hours and teachers press ahead with tomorrow's planned industrial action. Good evening. Shepparton and Wangaratta are preparing to take the brunt of more flooding as the ovens and broken rivers reach their peaks. Homes in low-lying areas are already flooded and evacuation centres are on standby. Despite police predictions, water levels won't top the 1974 disaster. Andrea Thompson with the latest. Shepparton residents prepared for the worst today as the Broken and the Goulburn Rivers continue to rise. The Broken River peaked this afternoon and the Goulburn River at Shepparton is expected to peak at 11.7 metres by mid-afternoon tomorrow. A DISPLAN meeting was held in Shepparton this morning. Officials anticipate between 50 and 100 homes will be evacuated in flood-prone areas at Kyala and along the boulevard. Three evacuation centres have been established, but DISPLAN coordinators say floodwaters won't reach the record levels of 1974. It's a little bit different this time as it's coming down the Broken River and not as much down the Goulburn River, so we're not going to be anywhere near effect, uh, affected as uh, Benalla. We won't have water running in the main street at Shepparton. The floods have already produced one amazing story of survival. 18-year-old Paul Isles from Denver spent five hours trapped in a tree last night after rising floodwaters engulfed his car on the Midland Highway between Shepparton and Benalla. He was eventually lifted to safety by a rescue helicopter. I'd just thinking how high I could get up the tree, just wondering, I wasn't sure how high the water could really go. Meanwhile, Benalla residents have commenced the heartbreaking task of cleaning up. Shops and businesses yesterday more than a metre and a half submerged are now coming to grips with almost unbelievable devastation. It's a very tragic thing obviously for the community, both in financial terms, because it involved many millions of dollars of loss, but also in, uh, in human terms and personal terms. Monetary wise, it's, it's probably around 120, 130,000 dollars we've lost. It's a disaster from start to finish. Watches, through my safes, everything is finished. Water restrictions have been imposed as the city battles to repair structural damage to its main supply channel. And uh, we have uh, only, as far as we know, two to three days water supply uh, guaranteed at the moment. People should uh, boil all water for human consumption for at least three minutes. 
In Myrtleford, the ovens and buffalo rivers remain at major flood levels, causing overnight evacuations, swamping properties and destabilising bridges. Schools, kindergartens and bus services also face massive disruptions across the northeast. Volunteers and emergency crews say extra sandbagging has helped withhold a second peak of the ovens in King, but will anxiously maintain a vigil throughout the night. As major flood warnings continue across the northeast, including the Goulburn ovens in King, the Hume Freeway at Wangaratta and Midland Highway between Shepparton and Benalla remain closed. Andrea Thompson, Vic News. Meanwhile, farmers are counting their losses with floods drowning livestock and destroying crops. Matt Dowling reports producers are facing a multi-million dollar damage bill. While the recent flooding hasn't claimed any human lives, it's extracted a heavy price on Goulburn North East rural communities. Thousands of head of cattle and sheep have been stranded by floodwaters. Along the Broken River Flats near Benalla, 200 cattle and 1,000 sheep are reported missing, presumed drowned. Crops and equipment have also been destroyed by the torrents. The Department of Agriculture says it's too early to estimate the rural damage bill, but Emergency Services Minister Pat McNamara says it will run into millions of dollars. The department has now turned its attention to Undira and Shepparton East, where floodwaters are expected to have a major impact this evening and tomorrow. Farmers in those areas are being urged to move stock and valuable equipment to higher ground. Once people start concentrating stock on properties, we'll need to feed stock. There will be uh, fodder reserves available from the Undira Recreation Reserve. Um, they'll probably have to come out of our area, from Bendigo area, to come into service this area. An officer from the Department of Agriculture will be based at a Displan Emergency Centre in Udmona. The department says some low-lying dairies will be flooded and cows may need to be sent to other farms for milking. The Undere area is a well-known area for flood um, problems. The, the losses probably won't be great, but production losses could come into effect with it. Matt Dowling, Vic News. Police wanting more for their hometown than for themselves. It was devastating, but I mean, uh, we just have to take it, haven't we? Wherever we went today, there were people cleaning up the most depressing mess and at the same time saying that somewhere in Benalla there were probably people who were much worse off than themselves. Benalla reacted to the floods like a modern city, trying to get help to those who need it most as quickly as possible, but at the same time found itself facing an age-old third world style problem. The flood took out its clean water system. We are seeking uh, the community's cooperation in uh, minimising the use of water and it's also necessary to boil any water for domestic purposes, drinking water for at least three minutes. In the main street it was hard to walk anywhere without encountering the distressing sight of the ruined stock of entire businesses sitting on the pavement awaiting the rubbish truck. Muddy water up to a metre deep went through scores of shops, destroying all the computer equipment in one local bank and catching the local travel agent unawares. To her horror, Joan Lukey's found the safe containing tens of thousands of dollars worth of plane and concert tickets was full of water. The Madonna tickets are wet, the airline tickets are wet. The people of Benalla hadn't expected this flood. For years, a new dam and channel to the southeast has protected their homes. Now the damage is in the uncountable millions, and yet their attitude is one of recovery. In Benalla, this is Peter Beaton for Seven Nightly News. And now joining us, Chief Superintendent Brian Coates. Brian, what is the situation now? Well, we're lucky that the uh, river seems to be subsiding and uh, we've, we've beaten it, I think, here. Well, that's great news. What yeah. about in Benalla and other areas? Benalla's recovering. They're in the recovery stage. They had the worst of it. They got the sudden flood and uh, um, they're, they're really going through the recovery stage now and there's a lot of mud and slush around, but they're, you know, they're pulling together and getting it really well. And going. how are the people coping? They're coping well. Everyone pulls together in these days and uh, they make it worthwhile and you can really see what a community's about. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very much, Chief Superintendent. Okay, thank you. And with thousands of Victorians now facing the heartbreaking task of getting back on their feet, Seven Nightly News has launched a special flood appeal. The appeal will be administered by the St Vincent de Paul Society and you can make donations to any Westpac bank. We hope you'll give generously to this worthy cause. Well, from disaster at home to the crisis in... Open for business. No, not opening today. Oh, Hopefully tomorrow, but I oh, couldn't guarantee it. Water which caused the damage was being used to help get life back to normal. But for many shopkeepers, stock which had been swept off shelves could not be salvaged. I don't know how much I'm going to save out of it. We're not as bad off as a lot of other places. Look at the bookshop. Thousands of dollars worth of books have been ruined and will be dumped. Most of those evacuated from their homes as the water levels rose have now returned to face a huge clean-up. Many have been shocked by the news that their insurance policies don't cover flood damage. 
and farmers, many of whom face ruin, are calling on the government to review flood warning procedures to give them more time to prepare. Many highways and other roads in the flooded areas remain closed and operators here at the Vic Roads Traffic Control Centre are monitoring the situation which is changing hourly. The major roads cut are the Hume Highway at Wangaratta, the Goulburn Valley Highway south of Shepparton, the Midland Highway between Shepparton and Benalla and the Ovens Highway. And Vic Roads advises motorists to stay away from other roads in the flooded areas. Unfortunately some motorists are attending to try and use them and getting caught and causing difficulties. Ian Neal, National 9 News. The rest of today's news after the break with the latest from Moscow after the tank assault which ended the parliamentary revolt. From engulfing the town. Shepparton breathed a sigh of relief at midday when the Goulburn River peaked at 11.7 metres, preventing widespread damage. Andrea Thompson begins our coverage. There were chaotic scenes at Shepparton's emergency operations centre as hundreds of nervous residents jammed lines to check on rising floodwaters. Anxious relatives calling from across Australia forced Telecom to cut incoming calls by a third. I can assure you that your friends, your loved ones, your families are all safe and secure. A mid-morning displan meeting attended by dozens of emergency personnel and council representatives was warned of sustained flooding in north, south and east Shepparton, Kyala and Marupna, penetrating low-lying homes. The Goulburn crested at 11.7 metres mid-afternoon. But we're not expecting any further rises. We've already peaked at Murchison. Uh, the Broken has peaked. There's no more rain forecast. We will drop, but it will be a slow drop. I suspect it's going to affect their lives for quite some time after, but the immediate um, water will probably be around for another 24, maybe 48 hours before it actually starts subsiding, and then we go into recovery phase. And By midday, southbound traffic to Melbourne along the Goulburn Valley Highway had to be rerouted as the Goulburn River swamped Victoria Park Lake, cutting the road in half. Traffic nightmares are compounding with dozens of quiet residential streets cordoned off as floodwaters from the broken creek laps hundreds of homes. Uh, what we're doing is blocking those streets off and not allowing any traffic in at all because the bow wave creates or well, makes the water higher than it would normally be and um, uh, it creates a lot more damage than necessarily caused. Uh... I guess that's one way to go to work, eh? Yeah, it certainly is frightening, yeah. But the main thing is uh, there's been no loss of... Uh, Human life. Meanwhile, flash flooding fears are shifting to the border towns of Cobram and Yarrawonga tonight. The Murray River, swollen by a 230,000 megalitre release from Lake Malwela, is spreading a wall of water downstream, with heights at Cobram now expected to be the highest in almost two decades. No evacuations are underway, but urgent sandbagging involving hundreds of volunteers will continue into the night to reinforce weak and levee banks protecting the town. The Goulburn is expected to recede to 11.5 metres by tomorrow afternoon. Andrea Thompson, Thick News. Goulburn Valley residents were relatively well prepared for the onslaught of water, but as Celia Horgan reports, the early warning did little to ease the heartache caused by waterlogged homes and ruined possessions. Battling darkness and rising floodwaters, residents of Kungapna began evacuations around midnight as the Broken River flooded into the main eastern channel, spreading sheets of water across farm and residential properties. Army trucks were dispatched one by one to different areas of the town to help those who wanted to move out. SES units from as far afield as Geelong joined Army officers in the relief efforts, which provided adventure for some children, others were blissfully unaware. Red Cross volunteer Peg Rayburn says about 35 families registered at the evacuation centre at the North Shepparton Secondary College. Basically not a lot of them stayed, what a lot of them ended was left their wives and brought their wives and children in, went back to organise the houses and most of the children we had were fairly young. Mrs Rayburn says they were all well prepared. A lot of them had packed it, you know, even up to 24 hours beforehand, knowing the chance was that they, they would have to leave. But no amount of warning and even the best laid plans couldn't prevent the swollen rivers from spilling out onto roads and into households. It's just been unbelievable. The water has just risen so quickly, it's just really extraordinary. I never expected to see anything like this. Up to a two this morning and uh, 
very draining experience. <laughs> we were really caught unawares, but um, once that uh, the water did start to rise, well, we were able to sandbag, and uh, of course everybody's pitched in and helped, so yeah, it's been, uh, been good. That, that community spirit continued to manifest itself throughout the day as the Goulburn Valley pulled together to get through the crisis. One Shepparton clothing business is donating thousands of clothing packs to those affected by the floods and was busy today packing T-shirts, track pants and wind sheeters for distribution tomorrow. The Department of Social Security officers at Shepparton and Wangaratta have advised clients due to lodge New Start and job search allowance forms yesterday will still receive their payments tomorrow. Most schools in the Goulburn Valley and North East will remain closed for the rest of the week. Meanwhile, both the south and north ends of the city remain waterlogged and emergency services are again urging people not to use the roads unless it's urgent. Celia Horgan, Vic News. Meanwhile, the big clean-up started in Wangaratta today and recovery operations continued in Benalla. Matt Dowling reports more than half a million dollars has already been allocated to flood victims in both centres. The floodwaters in and around Wangaratta had started to recede by this morning, leaving massive damage in its wake. For the victims, it was their first chance to go home and assess the devastation. For many, it was a heartbreaking task. Devastating. Devastating. I've only had this place for 12 months, but uh, the locals tell me that the 74 flood uh, was nothing like this. It's at least a metre higher than what it was in 74. This morning, the Hume Freeway, which had been closed north and south of Wangaratta since Monday, was reopened. But the highway itself has suffered major flood damage. Meanwhile, the clean-up operations continued in Benalla, which took the full brunt of the floods on Monday. Community recovery committees have been established to coordinate efforts in both Benalla and Wangaratta, but residents say it will take a long time before things return to normal. But really the most important thing is the human tragedy of people who've had their houses uh, inundated, their furniture's lost, their carpets. But best of all has been the tremendous community spirit with the whole community is bucked in right behind it. Tremendous to see what they've done. Police have warned Benalla residents the city's water supply is still contaminated. They're urging people to use water for essential purposes only and to boil it thoroughly before drinking. In Myrtleford, tobacco growers and industry representatives will hold a crisis meeting tomorrow. The floodwaters have jeopardised plans to sow new crops in November. Community Services Victoria says more than half a million dollars in emergency aid has already been distributed in the northeast. It says that figure will run into millions once re-establishment grants have been allocated. The Victorian government has appointed a CSV official to act as a liaison officer for flood victims. Victorian Premier Jeff Kennett will visit flood zones in the Goulburn northeast tomorrow. Matt Dowling, Vic News. People seeking personal hardship grants can telephone 057 220 507. Those wanting information about the floods can phone 058 217 912. Concerned relatives can contact the Red Cross on 03 686 8333. And volunteers wanting to help in Shepparton can phone the SES on 058 329 800 or Cobram Shire on 058 721 688. Primary Industries Minister Timon Crean and Premier Jeff Kennett will visit flooded areas tomorrow. Federal Opposition Leader John Hewson and National Party Head Tim Fisher will arrive on Friday to discuss with local authorities what additional help is needed. Rust Street reports. Dr Hewson and Mr Fisher will visit flood hit areas with local members Lou Lieberman and Bruce Lloyd. Mr Fisher says they'll be able to assess what additional help should be offered apart from the Natural Disaster Scheme provisions. Clearly, uh, we, uh, by a visit, can't work miracles, but we will have certainly a better understanding of the extent of the damage, the mop-up problems, and uh, the situation for places further downstream in the Murray system who are yet to receive this latest lot of uh, flooding. Mr Fisher says while the flooding is certainly a disaster, it's shown the true spirit of the hard-hit communities. Benalla, Wangaratta, Shepparton, Myrtleford, and many other communities in the way that they have responded as united communities. The move is seen by the member for Indy, Lou Lieberman, as the best way to push for more federal flood help. Help, he says, that is desperately needed. So it is a problem that I don't think the state can handle on its own, and I think that the federal authorities should come in on it as well. Prime Minister Keating has also been asked to visit the flood zones. Rust Street in Canberra, for Vic News. In stories still to come tonight, growers angry over gaps in the new wool legislation and another protest to mark the state government's first year in office.
Starting Sunday on Vic TV, fame and fortune. You could win a 13-day escorted tour of exotic Egypt, including a romantic four-day Nile cruise and $500 spending money. These are the moments. These are the moments. Don't let Process your precious moments with the guaranteed quality of Kodak Express. Why trust your memories to anyone less? The Personal Alarm Call System is a 24-hour service monitoring all of Victoria and interstate for persons at risk, the elderly, the disabled, those living alone or anyone concerned about their safety. A simple daily check ensures that all is well, but should a problem arise, a push of a button alerts the PAX Monitoring Centre, who summon the aid of your selected contacts immediately. PAX simply plugs into your phone socket. For full information, contact PAX at the Queen Elizabeth Centre Ballarat or phone 008 813 617. What do these properties have in common? They are patrolled by mainstream security. Mainstream security is a dedicated team of professionals devoted to the security needs of your property. Call Graham Warns today. Open River passed its peak without causing further serious devastation. Now the Murray is posing the greatest threat with floodwaters surging towards Cobram. A major battle to protect the town is underway and local farmers are moving stock to higher ground. From Cobram, Gavin McDougall reports. After the flooding in other cities, Cobram is not leaving anything to chance. Already a huge sandbagging operation is underway. Local residents have joined State Emergency Service volunteers to fill as many bags as possible. They're being used to give extra protection on levees separating the Murray River from the town there is still a long way for the river to rise. No one is sure if it will breach the levee, a recent addition to Cobram to protect new homes. But the activity here has a sense of urgency. It just came up so quickly. And the sad bang is urgent. They look very little to me. <laughs> they should be a lot bigger. More water is heading towards Cobram. It's come from the Ovens River, which threatened Wangaratta yesterday, and from Lake Mulwala. The reservoir upstream at Yarrawonga is full, and hundreds of thousands of megalitres have been released into the Murray. Some low-lying areas of Cobram have already begun to flood. There are no plans to evacuate people yet, but some residents have been told to move furniture in preparation for the rising waters. The new levee is 30 centimetres above the previous record flood level here at Cobram. The waters are still rising here now, with the peak expected in the next couple of hours. Only then will the residents of Cobram know if the levee will hold. Gavin McDougall at Cobram, National 9 News. Meanwhile, Shepparton residents are breathing a sigh of relief tonight now that the Goulburn River has passed its expected peak. Flat land kept the flood widespread and not deep, but Helen Bellard says about 200 people were forced from their homes. Evacuations began last night north of Shepparton at Kangupna. Soldiers ferry terrified residents to evacuation centres. Others elected to stay, trying desperately to stop the rising waters caused by a spill of the broken river into a major irrigation channel. By daylight, the broken had swelled to bursting point. Residents without a canoe handy were trapped in their homes. The school's been cancelled for Wednesday and Thursday because just all the floods and that. Search and rescue boats were checking for anyone in danger. Luckily, most were happy to stay in their homes. Hey, we've still got a, uh, probably about a foot to go, but... Um... It's a bit too close for comfort. As well as battling the floods, locals are also having to contend with snakes, browns and tigers, which are heading for high ground. They began shooting them last night. Meanwhile, in North Shepparton, the expected peak of the Goulburn River at 11.7 metres at midday brought two feet of water into homes along the riverbank. One family slept in their boat last night, afraid they'd be floating in their beds by morning. A harrowing experience. Families are now resigned to the floods. Children are allowed outside into their new watery playground, while authorities are predicting the worst is over. At Wangaratta, the Hume Highway showing signs of the force of the floods is open again. But local people are only beginning the task of rebuilding. After flying over the city and talking to flood victims whose homes hosted the dirty waters of the Goulburn River, the Premier said it was too early to assess the extensive damage bill. Coming to a 
even an approximate position yet in terms of damage is much too early. In nearby Taligarupna, population 350, it was all hands on deck and some small ones at that. Levy banks around the town held firm after days of hard work by locals. Uh, You've got to try something. Uh, can't sort of see a town go under, so we got to try doing something with it. On the Murray River, Cobram survived the flood peak with little water entering the town. Upriver at Barmer, meanwhile, angry locals condemned the Nathalia Shire Council after it Spirit, this report from Matt Dowling. Dr Hewson's visit to Benalla started with a meeting of municipal representatives from the city and surrounding shires. That was followed by a tour of the township, which had been under several feet of water four days earlier. Shop owners, still cleaning up the damage, told Dr Hewson of the hardships they were facing. He says it's a message he'll take back to the federal government, which has already offered flood aid assistance. Most people are saying here, look, we, you know, we want it, want it quickly. Uh, and you know, when you see a, a town like Benalla where the main street has just been, uh, had three or four feet of water through it and uh, every shop in town is worried about where they're going to get their stock from, how they're going to replace it, how they're going to clean it up. I mean, you do need to move quickly. Cause... Dr Hewson also heard complaints of inadequate warnings when the floods came and was told it would take $20 million in grants to put the town back on its feet. I don't know uh, at this stage, uh, uh, and I'm sure the town doesn't know, just how big the claim in the end would be and, and whether they'd be eligible. But we'll make sure that everything possible is done. And as I say, I mean, people are, are desperate to get a clear indication that they will get the support. The support is there. We'll just do our part to make sure it flows to them. Dr Hewson also visited Wangaratta, where the damage was mainly residential. Uh, there's still a uh, bit of cleaning up being done. Uh, people have hopped in and helped do that. Uh, the, the effort's been absolutely magnificent, you know, even after the stand down the other night, uh, the emergency phase, people were out the next day volunteering to help to clean out houses, to help people move back in. Community Services Victoria says between 3,000 and 4,000 houses and shops have been damaged by flooding in the Goulburn North East. $580,000 has been allocated for emergency grants for personal needs. More than 1,000 of those grants have gone to Benalla residents. The good news for Benalla and Wangaratta is that their contaminated water supplies are returning to normal, but residents are being told to continue boiling their drinking water for three minutes until further notice. Matt Dowling, Vic News. Meanwhile, flooding has triggered industrial action at Wangaratta's Bruck Textile Mills. The Metal Workers Union says the dispute began when management refused to pay six employees who went to help with the floods instead of staying at work. 18 union members placed bans on installing new equipment at the mill after two workers were allegedly stood down. The remaining metal workers have gone on strike, although the mill is still operating. Management has refused to comment on the dispute. The state government is moving to prevent an outbreak of exotic animal diseases. Agriculture Minister Bill McGrath says animal health officers will be sent to flooded properties to treat sick and weakened stock. More from Andrea Thompson. Agriculture Minister Bill McGrath accompanied National Party leader Tim Fisher for an official lunch in Shepparton today before embarking on a first-hand look at agricultural damage to Goulburn Murray farmers. With more than 1,000 primary producers facing a grim future, Mr McGrath says the state government will immediately deploy all available animal health officers to devastated properties. He says it's a preventative measure to stem an anticipated outbreak of exotic diseases as herds weakened by feeding difficulties become more susceptible to mastitis and foot rot. But there will be a need for, um, for um, supplementary feeding, uh, particularly the dairy herds that get them back on, into full production, which will take, I believe, some time with the discolation that has taken place. Mr McGrath also predicts farm gate losses for horticulture could rise as high as $20 million and up to $30 million in lost cereal and legume production, potentially ruining Australia's lucrative foothold in export markets. Now, unless we have the product there, um, we're not going to uh, be able to supply those export markets. Now, if we can't supply... Everything! We've got sewage all through our house! This public meeting, organised by Deputy Premier and local MP Pat McNamara, the first chance for flood victims to release their anger en masse. The whole friggin' street didn't know. They put the friggin' sign there. Why couldn't they go in? Where was that? The State Relief Coordinator and Local Recovery Committee Chairman were jeered. The Mayor shouted down. The main complaint, government authorities did not give adequate warning the floods were on their way. I mean, who do you trust? I mean, if the police car can't wake us up and have their siren going, who do you turn to? Despite today's bad experience, 
Pat McNamara plans further public meetings here. He says communication, no matter how strained, is vital. But there are positive signs here. Working bees are being formed to clean up public facilities such as the tennis courts. CFA volunteers are being bussed in from as far away as Western Port. Shops have launched flood sales. But the most popular store today, the Tats Lotto Agency. People here feel they deserve a lucky break. Hopefully, get some floor coverings and get back on our feet. Do you think you could do with a bit of a luck change? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Nick McCallum at Benella for National 9 News. Another major town is preparing itself as floodwaters continue their surge down the Murray River with huge tracts of north...